The horror began in June 1984. Los Angeles was under siege. Death waited in the dark at the hands of a man they called the Night Stalker. After a 14-month reign of terror, he was finally caught. It was only then that his true identity was discovered. His name, Richard Ramirez. Richard Ramirez's whole trip was to hide in a tree or hide behind a fence and watch his victims at nighttime and wait into the wee hours of the night. And then while they slept, creep in, you know, like a coward and, and kill him. The Night Stalker killed at least 13 times, 13 people who were awakened in the night to face death. At least 15 others survived his brutal attacks. I didn't particularly care for people. In a rare interview, Ramirez refused to discuss his own crimes, but had this to say about serial killers. A serial killer comes about by circumstances and like a, a recipe, poverty, drugs, child abuse. These things, you know, are, contribute to a person, uh, to a person's frustration and anger, and uh, and. Uh, at some point in life, he explodes. Perhaps for Richard Ramirez, that anger and frustration turned to rage, which he in turn took out on his victims. His killings were so sadistic and brutal that even experienced detectives were shocked. Well, he took a, a woman in her 60s and stomped her to death with his foot, leaving an imprint of a shoe on the side of her face. Uh, from that to just executing somebody upon walking into a room after he entered a house. He strangled, he used a ligature, he used a tire iron on a, on a young girl, a beater, left her for dead. Would your anger subside if you had to wipe up your mother's blood? I couldn't finish it, I had to leave my brother to finish that chore. Why on earth would you have hurt those people? Why did you kill those people? Uh, no comments, no comments. I, I cannot answer that at this time. What was Richard's motive? To what? kill. That's it? To kill. It's as simple as that. Richard Ramirez was raised in El Paso, Texas, the youngest of five children born to hardworking, strict parents. Eddie Milam was Richard's best friend back then and remembers when he began to change into a troublemaker. I did start seeing something going wrong with Ricky Ramirez. I think what really messed him up was the acid. He would do a lot of acid. The stealing, you know, I noticed the stealing and then started as a peeping thumb and things like that. Ramirez's passion for burglary earned him the nicknames of Ricky the Thief and Fingers. But Eddie knew Ramirez had other serious problems when he was fired from a local hotel. He said he was fired, he was dismissed due to the cause that uh, he, uh, he had tried to molest him two little kids that were going up, up the elevator. By 18, Ramirez was a high school dropout drifting around California. He stayed in Skid Row hotels, never seemed to work, but always had the money to buy cocaine. Friends say the Richard Ramirez they knew didn't date and wasn't the type to commit such heinous crimes. But convicted murderer Martin Kipp, who befriended Ramirez in prison, says he heard another side of the night. Richard told me he needed to associate gruesome violence with sex in order to be completely satisfied. He also told me that he had to violently fantasize about his victims before he could go away sexually gratified. They are desires whereas if, where if I didn't give in to them, I would be crushed by them. I believe in the, in the evil in human nature. This is a wicked, wicked world. And uh, in a wicked world, you, wicked people are born. I'm not going to blame society, my race, or people, or anything. Uh, it is up to the individual like myself uh, to, to keep on knocking on, on whatever door they want to get into. Because the victims and the methods of killing were so diverse, many experts felt there was no one Night Stalker. Detectives Carrillo and Salerno disagreed and finally broke the case by matching shoe prints. The subsequent trial turned into one of America's most notorious courtroom dramas, punctuated by continual outbursts from Ramirez. Parasites. In that trial, Ramirez's fascination with Satanism emerged. As far as Satan is concerned, I, I believe uh, in a malevolent being. Uh, his description eludes me, but I, I have felt powers that are evil. 
After an eight-month trial, Ramirez was convicted of all 13 murders and given multiple death sentences. I don't care about myself, really. No, I don't care about what happens to me. I never did, really.